In this TypeScript tutorial, we are going to walk through the concept of optional chaining. Now, this is something that is relatively new to TypeScript, and so if you've never seen it before, the syntax might look a little bit different, but it is something that is incredibly helpful, and we're going to walk through a real-world example to kind of mimic how you could use this. So right here, I have a type of employee the employee has an email and it has a optional set of roles, which is going to be an array of strings. And then I have this data object and the data object can optionally have a set of employees of that employee type. And then I have this data object here. Now, I took this pretty much copied and pasted from an actual API call. So that is where I'm wanting to mimic that because this is exactly the use case for how I use optional chaining in real life applications. So imagine that you've built out an application. It's a React app or an Angular or Vue app and you make a call to an API to get a set of users, and you're gonna to wanna to render them on the page. Well, while that, API, while that API call is occurring, you might have a millisecond or even several seconds where you're waiting for that data to populate. Then you don't know, maybe there was an issue with the API, maybe there was an error, maybe there was an error with the database query. You can't be 100% confident if and even when you're gonna get that list of employees in your application. And if you have parts of your application, such as a table or some type of component that's gonna render those items, then your application is just gonna essentially blow up and you're gonna have a big error because there is data that your application expects that it didn't receive. And so that's where optional chaining comes in. Before optional chaining was built out in JavaScript and in TypeScript, what you had to do with a situation like that is you had to have all of these really ugly nested types of conditionals. So right here, I'll scroll down to give us some room. Say that I am waiting for that data. I've built out the system that is going to format and render it on the screen. I would have to build out a conditional like this. I'd have to say something like if data, and so I'm having to make sure that I got my data in and that that was instantiated. And then I'd say, and if data dot employees, because I can't be 100% certain that I got my employees. So if I got all of that, and then I might even say something like data dot employees dot length is greater than zero. You know, you can see with a large enough API call or large enough application, you could end up writing conditional after conditional after conditional. One, it's very hard to read and also hard to maintain. It's very easy to forget what some of these conditionals are going to look like. And then you end up having to fill up your entire application with them. So in this situation, we have a number of different breakpoints where we're not completely confident if we're going to be able to have access to data or not. So I would say something like if data and data employees, and then I'm going to open up this block. And then I'll say, if I have those, then maybe I want to iterate over. So I'm going to build out a function here, or I'm going to build out a variable that's going to map over this data. So I'll just call it formatted employees. And I'll set this equal to employees or data dot employees dot map. And then I'll map over this data with each one of these items. I have an employee and it's going to be of the employee type. And then this is going to take a fat arrow function and it's going to return some data. In this case, I'm just going to return a formatted string. And in a real life scenario, like a React application, you'd be iterating over and maybe you'd be creating list items or divs or paragraph tags, things like that. In this case, we'll just return some strings. And so I'm going to say I want to return these strings and I'm going to say employee dot 
email because we know emails required all of our records will have an email and then to uppercase just so we can see it actually doing something and then let me have a console log statement and this would mimic having say you know our html render and in this case this isn't even technically going to work because i have to be outside of these conditionals so you can kind of see this is already starting to get messy so that means i'd have to not allow formatted employees to be a const variable i'd have to instantiate it up here and say formatted employees and then i would set it here just so i can have access to console log this out so let's just see if this is working. I'll hit run here and you can see that is all working. It's doing what we would want it to do. But this is pretty messy code. Just because I'm not sure if and when I'm gonna get access to these data points, I'm having to do all of this extra work. I'm having to instantiate this variable. I'm having to run these conditionals. And this doesn't even touch the fact that we also have some additional data points inside of here that we're not completely sure about. So let's say that we want to also get access to those roles. Then here I would have to do the same thing. I'd have to say something like let and then roles and set this and just instantiate it and then say if employee dot roles so if that exists and in this case we'd only have one record where that exists then i want to set roles this variable equal to employee dot roles and then uh, let's just do something like join it with a string so we're going to join it with a comma just like this and then i can take this roles data here and we'll just add that to what gets returned. Once again, this is just for showing an example real life application. For this, you would have this roles be a, like a React component of maybe little label or icons or something to represent what their roles are, and that's what would be returned. And so we have to do another conditional here because we're not sure if we're going to have roles or not. And you can kind of see this is starting to look really messy because we're having to do all kinds of different checks to see when we're going to have access to the data if we're going to. And then only then are we actually doing some work. So if I hit run here, you can see this is working. It prints out the admin role and then super admin for when the employee has those roles. And if not, it just says undefined, which in a React application, it just wouldn't show anything. So this is working, but we can do a lot better than this. So that is where optional chaining comes in. So let's see exactly how that can work. And I'm going to actually comment out all of this code here because I want you to be able to see the difference in how much better this can look. So that's all commented out. Now let's create a variable. So now I can use a const variable and I can declare that formatted employees variable and then I can call data and then the syntax for this is I'm going to call data with a question mark and then dot employees with a question mark right after that as well and then I can call map and then I can actually do everything that we did up here so I can say map and inside of that we're gonna get an employee and that's gonna be of employee type and then inside of here we're gonna return pretty much exactly what we have here so let's actually do that so I'm going to copy this. We're going to return that. And then roles, we can do the same thing. Make that a const variable. And now we can say employee.roles. But in this case, what we can say is 
roles, we're going to add a question mark because roles, we're not sure if we have access to it or not. And as you saw, TypeScript showed us that. So when I said employee.roles by itself, it's giving an error because it says the object is possibly undefined. And if we tried to run this code without the conditional and called join on it, we would get an error. But by using optional chaining, we no longer have an error. So now if I hit run, you'll see we get exactly the same behavior. So what took us here 10 lines of code, we were able to do in three, which is really neat. And if you want, we could even make this even easier. We could put this, all of this code, right inside of the string interpolation. And here we go, we have one function that does everything exactly the same way. So this is so much easier. It's a lot easier to read, to write, and to maintain. So now if we have a scenario where say that our API call has not happened yet, or we haven't received the data yet, well, we can mimic that by commenting out all of this code here. So this is kind of what would happen in a React application or an Angular app where you've made an API call, you're waiting to get the data back, but on the page, your page doesn't know to wait. And so if you're expecting data and you're trying to loop over that data, then you would get an error. But because we used the uh, because we use this optional chaining, we are no longer going to get that error. Now, the TypeScript compiler in the playground is showing us a little error right here. If you hover over, it says variable data is used before being assigned. That's simply because it looks at the application. It says, oh, I, I have this data. I've not actually done anything with it. I haven't set it. And so we're not going to do that because we're mimicking the way an API call would work. And so if you come here and you hit run, notice we don't get an error. All we get is undefined, which is exactly what we'd expect. So right here, because we used optional chaining, we said only if data exists. So if there's some data inside of data, then we want to, yeah, until that happens, we don't want to do anything. So format in employees doesn't blow up the application. It simply is going to skip by. It's going to say, I am undefined. And that's what gets returned. So you'll be able to prevent a lot of errors in your application by using this optional chaining. It's a really nice way of implementing the syntax. So now let's give another example. Let's take this one step further because I'm showing you how you can do optional chaining. You aren't limited to one single uh, type of data point and where you can chain them together. So with employees, I'm going to remove that question mark. And now you can see we have an error because the object is possibly undefined. If you look up at our employee type and then where we are calling data, notice here employees is optional. And the reason for this is this is very similar to an API. If you make an API call out to a some server you think it's going to send you back users, but if there's an error on the server, you don't want your own application to blow up. So if it doesn't send you back that list of employees, then you don't want your page to just you know show a giant error screen. Instead, you'd want to handle that gracefully. You'd want to say, oh, looks like we didn't get any employees back when we made that call. Uh, you know, try again later, you know, something like that. And so because of that, then what we can do is say that we have data. We did get our data call here. And so we got data back. The API sent something back, but it didn't send our employees back. Right now we would get an error. But if I use optional chaining again, and I say data question mark dot employees question mark. Now, if I run this, 
we're no longer going to get an error. We're just getting undefined again. So this gives you the ability with what we had to do here on line 18, where we said if data and data.employees, and you had to have an entire line and conditional dedicated just to being able to check to see if that data was there, you no longer have to do that. You can do it all in line right as you are setting the value for your variable. So I hope that you found this helpful. Optional chaining is something that allows you to write cleaner TypeScript and JavaScript code. I was a huge fan of when it came out. I was able to take many of my applications. I upgraded the version of TypeScript. Right now, we're using TypeScript 4.2.3. I believe optional chaining came out in TypeScript 3.77. So if you're using at least version 377 or above, then you can implement this syntax in your application and you can write cleaner code, more maintainable code, which is really what TypeScript is all about.